In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to use these two different images, combine them to create this double exposure effect. So without further ado, guys, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how to do this. So what we have here is the background image of the wolf. Now let's go ahead and bring the foreground image and we're going to stack it on top of this one. So now let's go ahead and combine these two images and create a fusion clip. So once the fusion clip is created, let's go ahead and take this fusion clip straight to the fusion page. And the first thing we're gonna do here is to create a mask around the wolf. So let's go ahead and project the background node onto the viewer and we're going to bring in a polygon masking node and let's go ahead and connect the polygon masking node to media in one. As a result, we're not really seeing anything at this point, but no worries. All we need to do is to check the invert box. This will allow us to see the image while creating the mask. I'm also going to switch to draw append instead of click append. Uh, it's just uh, much easier and also much quicker in this case. So yeah, all I am going to do right now is to create a mask around the wolf. There are so many ways, guys, you can do this. Uh, I am not going to try to go for precision at this point. I'm just going to create a very rough outline uh, around it. And then, uh, yeah, once that is done, let's go ahead and uncheck the invert box. And then uh, we are also going to make sure that there are no glaring issues around the mask. If there is, uh, I'm just going to quickly fix that. But uh, yeah, we are now ready to move on to the fun part. So let's come back to the merge node and project it onto the viewer. In the merge node, if we switch the operator from over to in and then change parameters like center and the size, this will actually allow us to very quickly create a double exposure effect. And if we want more of the background, we can change the blend setting. And this, as you guys can see, will allow uh, the wolf to show up more in this effect. We can also bring in additional masking node to highlight only certain parts of the image. So let's bring in a B spline masking node and we're going to create a mask around the head of the wolf. And then let's also hit the invert uh, button there and then bring up the soft edge setting. So this, as you guys can see, will really accentuate uh, the head of the wolf, make it more pronounced compared to the rest of the image. We can also add additional ones. So let's bring an uh, ellipse masking node connected to B spline. And then in the B spline node, we're going to change the paint mode uh, from merge uh, to invert. So now you will see that this part of the masking node will show up as well in the effect. And let's also go ahead and bring the uh, soft edge setting up a bit there. Uh, but yeah, the idea guys is that we can really highlight certain parts of this image, make it more prominent compared to the rest of it. And to put a finishing touch on this, let's just connect this to a background node. And uh, this is pretty much it guys but we can also allow parts of the foreground to protrude from the background. So in order to do that, let's uh, get rid of all these uh, additional nodes. We're going to approach this slightly differently. Let's reset the merge node. Let's also project the merge node onto uh, the viewer. And the first thing we're gonna do here is to bring in a transform node for our foreground node here. And we are going to go back to the merge node, bring down the blend setting about halfway. So the idea is that we want to right now be uh, able to see where we're going to place uh, this foreground image. So let's uh, go to the transform node and change the center as well as the size setting. This, as you guys can see, is really going to allow us to see what is the best place to place this foreground and also which part of it we want to protrude from the background. So once that is done, uh, let's just uh, come back to the merge node, bring the blend setting back to its original value. The next thing we're going to do is to bring a background node and then connect the transform node to the background node. So now we're essentially using our foreground image here as a foreground twice. And we're going to see very soon why we do this. So let's go ahead and uh, bring the alpha channel of this background node all the way down because we don't need to see it. And then let's also make a copy of this polygon masking node and then paste it and then connect this new polygon masking node to the new merge node. 
So now we have cropped out the foreground based on uh, the shape of the uh, wolf. And uh, what we're going to do right now is to bring additional masking node so that we can allow additional parts of the foreground to stick out. So let's bring a polygon masking node and uh, connect it to uh, this uh, polygon masking node. And then uh, all we need to do right now, guys, is to create a mask on top of the one that we already have. So this, as you can see, will allow additional parts of the foreground to show up. And now we just need to put a little finessing uh, into it so that it will transition smoothly. But basically guys, this is the reason why we're using this foreground image as a foreground twice for this very purpose. All right, so now let's try to bring the wolf more into this composite. And to do that, we're going to leverage the mask paint node, which you can find under the mask group. So let's bring that in and let's connect that to this other merge node. You're gonna see right away that we're going to lose everything, but that's okay. We're going to come to this merge node and then under the settings tab, let's go ahead and click apply masks inverted. So now this will bring everything back. Now let's come to the mask paint node. And the first thing we're gonna do here is to adjust the brush controls. So let's go ahead and bring up uh, both uh, size as well as the softness setting. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, just paint away. So we're going to bring up uh, certain parts of this wolf, especially the head of the wolf and uh, also some other parts as well. But because the opacity is right now set at 100%, so anything that we're bringing out is going to completely override whatever is in the foreground. And if we start to bring down the opacity setting down to let's say 65% and then continue to brush away, this, as you guys can see, will allow us to bring up uh, more parts of the wolf, but also uh, allow us to see a little bit of the foreground as well. So we have a lot of control over which part of the background we want to show and also how transparent it's going to look compared to the foreground. And at any point, we can also bring down the alpha channel all the way down to 0% and then brush away. This will actually take away, erase parts that we did. So let's uh, bring the alpha channel uh, back to 100% and uh, we're going to continue to bring down the opacity setting and then continue to brush away to bring out more parts of the wolf. But right now it's going to be very transparent uh, compared to uh, the, uh, the foreground. And uh, the idea here is that we just want a very smooth, very gradual transition of the background into the foreground. At this point, guys, we're pretty much done. So we just need to put a few finishing touches on this. The first thing we're going to do is to bring a background node, connect the merge node to the background node, and then let's project this new merge node onto the viewer. Now let's not worry about the background color yet. We're gonna come back to this later. The first thing we're gonna do here is to do some basic color grading to the background as well as the uh, foreground images. So let's connect a brightness and contrast node uh, to both the background as well as the foreground image. And for this uh, background image, which is the wolf, we're just going to do some very basic adjustments here, make some ba very basic changes uh, to saturation, contrast, and lift. And then let's also make sure that we click pre-divide and post multiply. This will make sure that whatever changes that we make here won't affect the colors downstream. So let's come to the foreground. Let's uh, also uh, make very similar changes uh, as well. And let's also once again, uh, check pre-divide and the post multiply. Now let's come back to the background node and we're going to click that pencil logo and then drop it on top of the highlight area of the foreground image. This will allow the background to mimic that color to create a very smooth transition. Now let's uh, go ahead and uh, connect uh, the merge node uh, to media out one and we can continue to work away at this. Uh, but, uh, you know, in terms of the workflow, guys, this is pretty much the end of it. And uh, because we're in DaVinci Resolve, we have a very powerful color page. So what we're gonna do is to just refine this effect a little bit more, but uh, we're gonna do that on the color page. So for this example, I'm going to keep it very basic. I'm just going to make some simple changes to highlight uh, shadow as well as mid-tone. But guys, you can get super creative with this and create all kinds of cool looks to this double exposure effect. So yeah, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope this helps. And as always, I will see you next time.